Hey Steeler fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to our Pittsburgh Steelers news and video here on a Tuesday as we again try to get closer and closer to training camp. Not a lot of crazy groundbreaking news is happening, so I wanted to dive into the roster because that's kind of the next big thing that has to happen for the Pittsburgh Steelers is roster cuts. And it's not going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to happen next week, it won't happen the first week of training camp at the end of July, and we'll start to whittle down though slowly but surely as you get through the month of August. And I think that I want to get you guys some options for roster bubble candidates. Who are the guys to keep an eye on during all the training camp reports you're going to watch here, here, or elsewhere, the blog reports, the tweets you're going to read about who's playing well and who's not, who are the guys that need to play well in order not to be cut. There is your roster bubble candidates we're going to get into today. Let's start with one of the obvious ones I think that everyone is going to be keeping an eye on during training camp, and that is Mason Rudolph. We've talked about Mason Rudolph 8 billion times here on the channel, but He's kind of polarizing. I mean, he's in a very unique situation right now as a quarterback on the Pittsburgh Steelers. What once was considered at least the number two, or at least in a position to battle for a number one spot after being re-signed. Now they have Mr. Trubisky, and the drafting of Kenny Pickett has thrown a massive wrench in his future plans of being a Pittsburgh Steeler. And I I've looked at a lot of roster projections online, and we did one here on the channel, and obviously, you know, you see SI.com has one, and Steeler Wire has one, and Steel Curtain. I mean, all the, web the websites have them. A lot of them don't have Mason Rudolph making this roster, and I think it honestly makes sense. There is an argument saying, well, you might as well keep him in case Trubisky and Pickett stick, right? Which technically could happen, even though we don't think it will, but it could. The other argument is Pickett and Trubisky both won't stink, and so why do you need a third quarterback who actually wants to be a starter? Like, let him be free, let him go sign with the Seattle Seahawks, or let him go sign with the Cleveland Browns and, you know, have a chance to actually win a starting job. And so, I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think that that's what the Steelers are going to probably eventually do. They got to see what Kenny Pickett is able to do. He has to at least prove he's ready to be a number two week one, because Mitch Trubisky should get the starting job. I'd be shocked if he were to lose this job, just because, you know, Pickett's still a little raw, still very much, you know, a young rookie quarterback. You want to give him time to develop and so as long as he proves that he's ready to go by week one to be either the starter or the number two, I think it's a very safe place to let go of Mason Rudolph, making him a big-time bubble candidate. And I, I, again, I don't know if there's a lot of, you know, elevation for him, regardless of how well he plays in training camp, just because they're not going to put him ahead of the number one overall draft pick or the number one Steeler overall draft pick in Kenny Pickett. So an obvious one to start, get him out of the way, Mason Rudolph. All right, add great pin comment down below. Name a player on the roster bubble. Is there somebody who is, is on that edge, is on the roster bubble for the Pittsburgh Steelers you're keeping an eye on during training camp? Maybe he's on our list, so wait and see. If not, go down below and uh, give me your pick down below in the pin comment. All right, next player has got to be Anthony McFarland. And I, I think if you're a running back on the Steelers, not named Najee Harris, you got to be at least trying to perform extremely hard at training camp because Harris is going to eat a lot of carries. And they've mentioned they're going to dial back his carries a little bit. But what does that really mean, right? Najee Harris is the lead back. Najee Harris is a feature back, you know, a dying breed in the National Football League. And so if you're not the number two running back, which we think is going to be Benny Snell, at least I do, and you're Anthony McFarland, you better really work hard at training camp or else you're going to be let go. Now, much like with Mason and Rudolph, I think that McFarlane can play for another football team. Now that he's going to get cut and not re-signed somewhere, but this depth chart, it doesn't look very crowded, but in reality, it's kind of a two-horse race, and if you're the third horse in this pack, you might not make the uh, final roster, and so this is going to be an ongoing battle. It's not guaranteed to be Benny Snell. It's going to be Farland versus Snell, and then maybe an undrafted free agent or whatever, but these are the two guys that uh, I really think are going to have a really good chance of not only making the roster, but getting some significant carries whenever they need to spell Najee Harris. But if you don't become the number two and you're McFarlane, you might be let go. Plus, there are some undrafted free agents who could push him. I mean, we got to at least acknowledge some guys like Mateo Durant or Jalen Warren. They've looked good during OTAs, albeit that is OTAs. And so, you know, you can't take too much from OTAs. But let's just say you're Anthony McFarlane and you're struggling to get to the number three spot. Look behind you. There's Mateo Durant or Jalen Warren. You could really be out of a job there. So big time bubble candidate is definitely as Anthony McFarlane. We can tie in Benny Snell here as well because they're really battling, but another guy to add on to our list. Uh, okay, we always have this debate here uh, at Chat Sports. A lot of guys that are at Dallas headquarters are asking, black and gold or black and yellow for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Type BG for black and gold. Type BY for black and yellow. I've always said black and gold, but, I mean, yellow, it is yellow. Like, it's not really gold. It is technically yellow. But either way, which is it? Help us to, to solve this debate. Black and gold uh, or black and yellow. Speaking of uh, black and yellow, right now you can get the black and yellow shirt down below right now at chatsports.com slash black and yellow. Link will be on your screen and down below in the description box as well. Limited availability, so you got to get 
features today, right? The limited availability is serious. This stuff runs out very, very quickly. All the real deal stuff, all the sizes currently are available, but that could change. So grab yours now. Chatsports.com forward slash black and yellow to pick up your shirt today. Okay, next player on the bubble. We got to get to a wide receiver because there will be wide receivers cut. The question is who? I'll throw up Anthony Miller, although you can make the case it could be Miles Boykin, but let's just say Miller is a bubble candidate here. And I think the real reason is, 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 is Calvin Austin. And my question is, how good is Calvin Austin? How good can he be? Because if Austin is great, then there is not a need to keep both Boykin and Miller or an argument to keep either Boykin or Miller. But if Calvin Austin during training camp eh, doesn't look that great or eh, doesn't look fully ready to actually get some serious snaps, and I say serious, you know, 30 catches a, you know, a season. We're not getting crazy here as a rookie wide receiver, but you could really see a guy like Miller uh, be a bubble candidate. And so as you go through this depth chart, the rookies have a lot of questions and a lot of expectations, especially for George Pickens. But with Calvin Austin being there as well, you know, I don't see a lot of drafts with two wide receivers taken by one football team. If he plays well, you could see Boykin or Miller out of a job. And so they both will we'll say Miller uh, are bubble candidates as well. Who makes the team? What do you think? Probably one does. Type MB down below for Miles Boykin or type AM down below for Anthony Miller. Very curious where you guys are at on that. I say Miller does, but it could be Boykin. I mean, we go back and forth here at the channel, so who knows? Give me your best guess down below right now. Okay, we are also so close to 15,000 subscribers here on the channel. If you guys hate the Ravens and the Browns, the Browns, goodness, uh, and the Bengals, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. If you love the Steelers, black and gold, black and yellow, who cares? We have 14,873 of you guys. Let's get to 15K. We're so close to 15K here on the channel, so go down below and subscribe. Myself, Tom, Harrison, all the guys at Chat Sports who do videos on this channel. We like to mix it up, give you guys different personalities here, but all are focused on the Steelers. So if you guys appreciate that, go down below and subscribe. All right, we must mention an A offensive lineman, Chaz Green, uh, I think is one who very much is a roster bubble candidate. A lot of the roster projections that I saw do not have Green making the final roster. Uh, wrong side of 30, right? Still a practice squad in the past. Never really started for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, he's moved around here. He's in the age, age of 30. And while depth is always an issue on this offensive line, I think the O-line has improved enough internally to where the outside should be okay. And if you're Green, you're, try, you're, you're, you're basically battling to try to be a backup right now. I think he uh, has a very real chance of not making the roster and has to have a good training camp and a good preseason uh, in order to not be or to get off the bubble and not be a cut candidate. Uh, okay, final player. We got to mention Carl Joseph as uh, he really, I mean, talk about a bubble player. There's a lot of players ahead of him on this current depth chart. And I think that as it goes, I think Joseph has a very real chance of not being a stealer by the time that uh, the, uh, the season actually starts. I mean, look at, look at this depth chart. Let's just be real here. Look at the depth chart. You have Minka and Edmonds, right? Your two starters. You have KZ and Killebrew. Those are two solid backups. Then you have Norwood. Then you have Joseph, right? I mean, you're talking about one, two, three, four, five players in front of you. Are they going to keep six safeties? Uh, probably not. I think Carl Joseph's a fine player as well, uh, and I've been rooting for him for sure. But as you go through this depth chart, it's just, you know, there's no way you get past Minka and Edmonds. Obviously, hey, Killebrew are sitting right there as well, KZ. I, I, I just think that Joseph has a very, very high chance of being let go, and hence why he is on our bubble candidate list. And so we will keep an eye on, on, on that battle. But all these battles are going to be exciting. They're all going to be intriguing. And that's the beauty of training camp because, yes, you're focusing in on the starters. Like, how's Mitch Trubisky looking? How's George Pickens looking? But the bubble guys are the guys that are fighting for their for, for their work lives right now. You know, maybe cut, move cities, go somewhere else. Do you even stay in the National Football League? These are the training camp battles to keep an eye on. It's why I love training camp so much. And we're going to be covering it all. And I'm going to emphasize that here on the channel. I mean, as soon as we get to the start of training camp, end of July, two weeks away, almost every single video here is going to be nonstop updates. We're going to be providing you as many updates as we possibly can regarding quarterback battles, regarding training camp uh, news and rumors, regarding injuries. Hopefully not, but, you know, injuries happen. People will be held out of practices and stuff. And so we're going to try to be your one-stop shop for all the latest Pittsburgh Steelers news and rumors. So make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. As mentioned earlier, we're at very close to 15,000 subscribers. 15,000, which is... I mean, it's a lot of subscribers on this channel, so help us grow, help us continue to get there, and we will provide you guys nonstop great Steelers news and rumors. Also, mailbag video happening later on this weekend. Hashtag Steelers down below in the comments section. If you've never asked a question or had a question answered on our Steelers mailbag, 
Very simple. Got to be a, a subscriber and then go down below on this video or any of our other Steeler videos from the past couple of days. Type hashtag Steelers. That helps us find the question in the comment section, right? That's how we do command F and search and find your question. Ask a question. Make it a relevant good one. You know, try, try not to be or try to be original. Don't try to copy someone else's question. Uh, if you ask a good one, you have a very good chance of it being pulled and hopefully answered by one of us here at Chat Sports in a weekend mailbag. But for all the time we have for today on our Pittsburgh Steelers news and video, plenty more content. As I said, coming up in a couple of days and weeks, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.